Symbolic Mythology and Translation of a Forgotten Language by John Woolsey Published 1917 Narrated by Average American Part 2 Chapter 1 Continued The Egyptian and Hindu religions grew more mystical and esoteric with age under later complications and refinement of symbolic mysticism by the priesthood. Animals and inanimate things were employed in the ancient hieroglyphics as words and to express the divine attributes and different capacities of the gods. This animal and material worship in after years was the direct outgrowth and inheritance of their picture writing which continued on in the stories of mythology long after the hieroglyphic language had ceased. The remains of these composite animals still remain in our household furniture with claw feet and the water gutters of our eaves are surmounted with dragon's head. Waters at the fountain still runs from the lion's mouth as the ancient water flow occurred in the sign of the lion at midsummer. The Raven. That raven or crow figures in myths from India to Britain and on the Pacific coast of America. A well chosen symbol of winter and death was the raven, which is black as night, with a hoarse sepulchral voice and feeds upon the dead. The vulture, the black bird of winter and death, prey upon the vitals of Prometheus, the redeeming sun. In Thessaly, they fed sacred ravens in honor of the sun. The black vultures of Veracruz cover every roof and are as tame as the inhabitants themselves. They are the exiles of the country town. They were there before the white man and lived around the wigwams of the Indians. As the raven is still sacred on the northwest coast of Washington Territory, British Columbia, and Alaska. There the raven is sacred and feeds around the Indian villages and among many tribes he was their ancestor. A Prometheus, he was the all-wise and was boundless darkness above which brooded over all things. Having no place for standing or resting his feet, he was obliged in keeping his wings forever moving over the vast abyss, until he finally beat down darkness into solid land covered with mist and damp. Then he set himself at work to create light among the thinkers. This raven was called Yell, who knew a certain old chief had all the light stored away in three boxes closely guarded. So, to secure the prize, he contrived to be born of the chief's family by changing himself into a blade of grass. Thereby, he entered the drinking cup of the chief's daughter and was swallowed by her. In due time, she gave birth to a son who was called Yell. And in this way, as soon as he grew to strength, he obtained the boxes and liberated the sun, moon, and stars. Then he changed himself into a raven and flew away with the bright cosmic orbs, even as the Norse Odin flew away with the giant's brew. It was said all birds came to the spring festival except the raven. Frederick Barbarossa must not awake until the ravens are done flying. The gubernatus tale of La Bella e la Bruta, who is told not to turn when the donkey brays, but to turn when the cock crows. The donkey is a winter pack horse, for it is the winter that is judge and prophet in the hidden world. The sun in exile, like Merlin, prophesies and goes down with the hidden knowledge into Hades. The raven which carried off the maid from her father's castle, the sun, 
to his moon castle where at night she beholds all that is going on in her father's home by a mirror hanging in her bedroom, which is the reflection of sunlight. The following is from the ancient songs of the Finlanders' origin of the raven. Lempo's bird devours birth and was born upon a charcoal hill, the moon, reared upon a charcoal hearth, gathered from burning brands, bred from charcoal sticks. Its head was made of potsherds, its breastbone from Lempo spinning wheel, which proves the raven was the winter moon personified. The moon is the black raven which brings the message or red letter under his wing to Odin, the goth. Hugen, reflection, and Munin, memory, they whisper to Odin what they see. They are a telltale of the sun's doings when he is out of sight. The mirror of the sun, the name of one reflection, exactly corresponds to the reflection of the absent sun upon the moon, that sharp sight who sees around corners. They are the ermin and thummim of the Hebrews, the lights and reflection of the moon. The raven was the black moon that Noah sent out first from the ark, that flew about feeding upon the dead. On the third evening he sent the new moon, which returned with the olive branch in her mouth. This was the first new moon of spring. These were the two ravens of Odin, one on each shoulder. The priests of Mithras were called sacred ravens. Religion everywhere is purposely filled with dark sayings. The priests of the sun god were called ravens, and the ravens that fed Elijah, and the old monk fed by the raven of the sea in Celtic romances, and how that raven was a sacred bird to the Hebrews, and assisted nations as a prophet. For it was the black moon, their ark, the magic box, and the oracle of ancient times. Spring never comes until the ravens are done flying, which ended the sleep of Barbarossa. The Lion It was when the rise of the Nile occurred at the summer solstice in the sign of Leo. That is why the lion is at our fountains with water running from his mouth. Bacchus was a prey to madness sent by a fury from hell who made a spring at him in the form of a lion when he becomes a madman. Agave saw this lion when her own son, Pentheus, appeared to her as a lion. And it is her son, the spring sun, in the sign of Leo, at summer solstice, when the character of the season changes from that of the lamb of Aries to that of the destroying lion. When Hercules could only be cured by being sold to Omphali, the moon harlot, she took from him his club and lion skin, which she wore, and he worked with her spool. He clothed himself in feminine attire and spun with her women. Hercules is the midsummer sun in the sign of Leo, the time of his greatest strength, when Omphali, the winter harlot moon, took from him his strength, as Delilah did the same for Samson. Thisbe was frightened at a lioness where Pyr Pyramus kills himself at the midsummer scene. Like the rose garden where the father stops to get a rose for his daughter, a lion stopped him and exacted from him the promise of his daughter, which he was compelled to grant as it was the midsummer in departure. Again, he in Hindu is Vishnu, the mild summer sun, which becomes the destroying lion of midsummer. Daniel, the sun, is cast into the den of lions at midsummer, and it is the moon in Leo. Sometimes he's cast into a den of serpents. The goddess Astarte was represented sitting on a lion, 
her head surrounded with rays, and in one hand a thunderbolt, in the other a scepter. Astarte, the powerful divinity of Syria, was like Sibylle, the universal mother of the Phrygians, and by some called Juno, and by others Venus. She was held up as the great nature goddess, and was like other goddesses, many attributes like the Ephesian Diana. It was at the time Samson slew the lion at midsummer watering trough. It was the time when Daniel was cast into the den of lions. He was Samson entering the den. In other tales, it is the lion who overthrows the bull or fertilizing sun at midsummer. The Nile begins to rise about the later part of June or the summer solstice and reaches its greatest height about the time of the fall equinox. The sun enters the lion's den every midsummer. Rama falls beneath some giant foe, a bull whom lions overthrow. Sibylle is seen riding on her lions that slay the mighty bulls. The Ring would you have your wish fulfilled, you have only to turn the ring on your finger. The arms of the city of Glasgow are a bell, a tree, a bird, and a fish with a ring in its mouth. Again, Glasgow means the cow. They are all symbols of the same moon. These rings of which Aaron made a calf were the same rings which Gideon collected, the spoil of the Ishmaelite, and made an ephod and put it in his city of opera. The man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and gave to Rebecca. That new moon ring is one of the most universal symbol used over the earth among civilized and primitive people alike. It is the silver door of the moon that entered the hall of the moon sanctuary, the sign of good luck, the victory wafter, the triumph of light over darkness. The sun dwelt there and rode over the dark moon waters in that ring as a silver boat. The moon comes up every month and passes over its ring to the next constellation. It was the halo or magic necklace of Freya. It is the bracelet of Aphrodite, that golden bracelet of the moon, ring whose thickness increased every night. These rings, worn as armlets, had originally the same lunar expression as the ring mounds of earth for enclosures. Money was made into rings as gold and silver currency. It was the ring moon of the old Celtic and Cymric race, as mentioned by Caesar. Plus, the old Britons had armor made of steel rings, Antiquary, 1887. Froda, the god of peace of the Norse mythology, ruled over the red rings and the mill called Grot, which ground whatever was wished. Young Edda Anderson, song of the Grot or mill, and the mill was the moon. King Solomon imprisoned evil spirits in jars, which were sealed up with his signet ring and then cast them into the sea. It is the imp in the bottle thrown down in the depths of the moon Hades during the summer. But they will escape in time to destroy the work of the summer brother. In the Middle Ages, gems were engraved with mystic symbols and the name of God. Then it was blessed by the priests, which rendered them potent against evil. Again, it was a wish ring, and whatever its possessor required it brought whether clothes or food. In the absence of a ring, little girls lock their fingers and make a wish. Biarco is unable to see one who is riding a white steed until he peeps through a ring, which has been formed by the arm of a woman to whom spirits are visible. The white steed is a son riding the white horse of the moon at night, 
He is the night sun. The arm of the woman is the new moon, and spirits and ghosts are only visible at night when the sun is absent, and the sun peeps through the moon ring. The ring held by the dwarf in sly boots, Estonian tails, the ring of strength on his left hand, which he will not part with, is a token of remembrance from his dead wife. The dead wife is the dark moon. The one who held that wish ring would never want for money. It was the fruitful ring. It would drop rings until the purse was full. That ring which was given at parting was a token. When it changed color, it foreshadowed evil. This moon is represented as stretching out her hand in a dark passage to receive the ring. The time is at the conjunction of sun and moon on the first night of the new moon. This ring has curative powers. By rubbing styes on the eyelids or hung in the ears in the same way as the sun healed the sore eyes of the moon Leah and restored sight to the blind by the, his healing ring, this gave rise to the superstition of putting gold rings in the ears to cure sore eyes formerly so prevalent. The ship on which Baldur's body was burned was called Ringhorn. It was the moon ship, that horn-end ring of the moon on which Sigurd and Hercules were burned. Odin put his own ring, Dropner, on Baldur's funeral pyre. The ring was dwarf-wrought, and every ninth night dropped eight rings of equal weight. The ring and lamp of Aladdin in Arabian Nights by rubbing them, two genie appear, who are the slaves of the lamp and ring, and are obedient to the commands of the owner. Ring and lamp are one in phenomena. The new moon, they can only be produced at the conjunction of sun and moon when they rub together, and by friction create new fire, as it were. A twin fire and the two horns of the moon are the genie, or twin-born children of sun and moon. Her old lover was identified by a ring in the ballad of Hyde Horn. A bride came tripping down the stair. The combs glowed red in her wavy hair. A cup of wine she held in her hand, and that she gave to the beggar man. As out of the cup he drank the wine, Twas into the cup he dropped the ring. Got ye that by sea or land, or got ye that on a drowned man's hand? I got it not by sea or land, nor got it on a drowned man's hand, but I got it on my wooing day, and I'll give it to you on your wedding day. Sometimes in drinking the maiden found the half ring in the bottom of the glass. By this she knew her lover, the moon, fills her disc by joining her horns. This will make the ring complete. Enchantment or magic was broken by a ring when the suitor drinking the glass of wine finds the gold ring at the bottom. This is the same phenomenon as the moon sea drawn dry by the bowls of hue of Britain until the chalice or cup appears or Thor drink in the ocean or drawn up the moon sea from its bed until that ring or serpent appears which is the ring of the new moon. The ring of the springtime was warm and life-giving and red as wine. That was the wedding ring but the winter ring was cold on her finger. The moon became paralyzed and turned to stone or the summer gold ring was taken off the hand of Brunhild, the summer mood maiden, by Sigurd, her summer hero, and replaced by the cold ring of winter. Story of Sakuntala, the nymph of nature, born and left in a forest where she was nursed by birds, was found and brought up by the sage Kanwa in his hermitage. She became the wife of Dashyanta, a king of the lunar race, by a Gantarva marriage. 
that is a simple declaration of mutual acceptance, and when her husband left her to return to his city, he gave her a ring as a pledge of love and remembrance. But finding herself about to become a mother, she set off to rejoin her husband. But on her way, while bathing in a sacred pool, she lost the ring. When she reached the palace of her husband, the king was unable to identify her without the ring, and she returned to the forest with her mother and gave birth to Bharata. At that time, a fisherman caught a large fish in which was found a ring. He carried it to Dashantadyanta, the husband of Sakuntala, and the king recognized his own ring. So he accepted Sakuntala and her son Bharata. The previous story from the Hindu Mahabharata has had very wide circulation and admiration. It is a story of the new moon ring, which is lost every month for three days, but is always found on the third day. The seal of Solomon had engraved upon it the great name of God. It was the most famous talisman which gave its possessor command over all elements, demons, and created beings. The first ring of the moon was the seed ring. All the other rings are born of that one ring which never dies. Though the house be burned or sunk into the sea, though robbers carry it off, it will be returned for on that all the gods have set their seal. That was the golden fleece of the shepherd and the plowshare of the tiller. This ring belonged to the ancient hoard of the Niblungs, kept in the moon casket. It was the ring of Andavari the dwarf, taken from him by Loki and given to Bidmar the ancient. Then it was taken by his son, Fafnir the serpent, who slew his father and took from him the hoard, which he hid down upon the seafloor of the moon. It was called the serpent's bed and the bed of the old wallflower. Again in the spring, the sun prince Sigurd slew the serpent and took back the ring of Andvari and its curse with it and wed Brunhild. Then he took it off her finger at the end of summer and gave it to Gudrun, the winter moon, his second wife. Fairies such as Puck and Oberon, when they danced by moonlight with locked hands, formed the elfin ring. Among the Norsemen, a holy oath was taken upon a ring kept in the temple for that purpose. Odin himself gave a ring oath in the Havamal, where Loki drew off the elf ring. It was the ring of Andvari, the dwarf. It was the seed ring of gold and of grief. From what land comes the hauberk? It holds firm and fast the life of the body it laps. It has a body shield of rings that come from the land of the sun and is the coat and belt of rings which shield the moon. In northern custom, on Shrove Tuesday, on Bannock night, a cake was baked in silence by the maiden. If she spoke, or broke silence, or her tongue loosed, another took her place. A ring was put into the cake, and after it was baked, broken in as many pieces as there were persons present. Then whoever got the ring was first to be married. The wonderful ring, the gift of the serpent king from the Hindu by steel and temple. The ring was the gift of the serpent king to a spendthrift prince. It was a priceless treasure and brought his possessor whatever he wished. It built for the prince a golden palace with golden stairs in the middle of the sea in one night, which is the new moon palace. Then won by it the princess to wife. And in time, as she was combing her hair, two of her golden hairs escaped and floated down to the mouth of the stream. It betrayed the princess. Her old witch aunt fitted out a barge, and in the absence of the prince, her husband, she brought her down to the royal city at the river mouth, 
to become the wife of the winter king of Hades. And the wise woman, her aunt, who was the mistress of Hades, the winter moon, took from her the wish ring and kept it in her mouth night and day for safety. For whoever possessed the ring could have his wish whatever it might be. But after six months, the first husband obtained the ring by strategy. Then he had but to wish his wife back, and again she was by his side in the golden palace of the sea, which is the spring moon. That ring of Anvari was called the Bale of Men, the ring of the elf king, and a curse went with it. The last story is easily explained. The Serpent King is the Winter Moon, the owner of the jewel, and he is Hades, sometimes brother and sometimes uncle to the Sun Prince, and that gem is his crown jewel. This old uncle is the schoolmaster who educated the young prince. He is Kiron the centaur, the master of masters. He is obliged every spring to, come, to give up the jewel to the summer king as Jason compels him to give up the golden fleece, and as Sigurd the Volsung compels the serpent to give up the winter hoard of gold. As Hercules compels him to give up the golden apples of Eden, then that golden palace built in one night is the new moon of spring built in the middle of the blue sea of the moon. His bride is but the feminine form of himself. Her two golden hairs were the two forks of the moon floating down to winter or the underworld, the herald and omen of her doom. She had to become the deity and bride of the winter king. The ring is kept concealed in the mouth of the wise woman, her witch aunt, that is shut in the dark moon, and that ring must be obtained before the princess can be released. It cannot be kept longer than springtime, for it is the power over all things and will burst the iron chamber and break the chains of darkness. For it is the rod of life and will restore the golden maiden and the golden fleece. That wise woman and aunt was the third fate who serves the threat of the year. That ring was removed from the finger of the princess as Sigurd the Volsung removed the summer ring from the hand of Brunhild. In the Volsung saga, this ring was called the seed of gold and of grief. It was the elf ring and wrought by the dwarves, the pygmies down in the depths of the moon mines. This gold was the seed of gold to the wise and shapers of things and the hoarders of hidden treasures, but the seed of woe to the world and to the short-lived race of the earth. The seed of gold is the nugget which serves the conflagration of the moon. It was called the seed of gold, for it grew to fill the moon, and was the glory of rings from which a new ring was added every night. It grew for fourteen nights, and then came the black rakasha, and devoured the fingers of the moon one every night. This ring, possessed by Odin, the chief god of the Scandinavians, was called Dropner, or Drop Ring, for it dropped a ring of light every night. To find out how much pure gold there was in the moon, it was put into a crucible and melted. This is a tentative method to find out how much remained unalloyed. In the slacked ashes after it cooled, it was found that the little ring we call the new moon was all that survived the crucial test. These were the rings which Aaron the priest collected from his congregation. The gift of the sun and moon floated down since the first ring was brought to mark the beginning of time. Aaron put them in this old iron pot of the moon which was kept for smelting purposes and melted them. And behold, there came out a golden calf. For as the moon wore horns and was the giver of the dews, the milk and wine of heaven, she was likened to a cow. This was her young calf. 
it had been the custom of old to celebrate the event with festivity and with dance and song. When the regeneration of the season occurred in Taurus, the sign of the bull, under the old Tauric system, the newborn child of the sun and the moon was called a calf. But when it occurred later, under the sign of Aries or the ram, we find the media, the moon sorceress, cut the old ram of the year in pieces. They were put in the same moon cauldron and reborn as a lamb. The bull worship was well nigh universal among civilized nations of the earth. It was very popular with our dutical ancestors of Britain and the Isle of Man. Anciently, Mona, or Moon Island, was the favorite seat of worship. Near it is situated a little island still called the Olaf. The moon was the mighty Prahlada, son of Haranga Kasipu, a righteous man whom fire could not burn, who died not when pierced with weapons, thrown into the sea, overwhelmed with rocks, bitten by venomous snakes, hurled from the mountain crest, cast in the flames, though deadly poisons were administered by the servants of the king, he still remained unhurt. Sigurd the Volsung drew out his treasure of the moon and loaded it upon his horse Greyfell. It was that bed of treasure where we see the golden nugget lying in the dark cavern of the moon. It is as a floor or bed of the moon sea on which the black serpent slept all winter hoarding the treasure. Sigurd slew the serpent Fafner and took the gold and scattered it abroad in golden sunshine every spring. I bind the red ring, Sigurd, bind up to cast abroad that earth may laugh before you rejoice by the water's hoard. That new moon is Proteus, the first form or principle, the Promantha, the Prometheus, born not to die. The warrior wore ring mail. The first ring of the new moon, that ring was called the seed of gold and of grief. In the Norse epic, it was the ring of Andvari, the dwarf. That ring covered the door of the moon vault where the golden treasures were buried in winter. The sun prince wed the moon every spring with his golden ring. It was cast into the sea like Jonah, and the third day floated upon the waters. The dramatic representation of this was enacted on Ascension Day, when the does of Venice wed the waters of the Adriatic with the gold ring cast into the water, saying, we espouse you, see, as a token of our perpetual dominion over you. A heavy gold ring was kept in the temple by the Norsemen, upon which the holy oath was sworn, having been previously dipped in the blood of the sacred animals offered up to the god. It is the ring Dropner, which Odin placed on the funeral pyre of Balder, when he and his wife Nanna lay dead. Even the god Odin gave a ring oath. As chief ring it drops the other rings, or creates the other rings of the moon. It is the seed ring. That one seed ring grew to fill the moon. The goldsmiths and alchemists were summoned to learn the history of this ring. At the end of seven days they declared, We find, O king, that this ring is made of gold which comes from afar, and is the workmanship produced in the kingdoms of the West. It is the first ring of the new moon, which is always forged in the western smithy of the moon. It never appears in the West, where the Telchines or metal workers are seen working in the shop of the moon amid fire and smoke. That is fairyland, and these workmen are the dwarves and forgers. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. That is the smoking furnace. 
it is that smelting house where the weapons and cutlery of the gods and the rings and bracelets and the necklaces and girdles were wrought by the dwarves, the telchines and dactyli, who were metal forgers and great sorcerers. Part of them worked a spell. Those of the left and those on the right broke the spell of enchantment. In the prior account of the vision of Abraham, the sun had gone down. It was dark, and the lamp of the new moon passed between the smoking furnace of the dark moon and the sun, which had gone down. In the northern mythology, Hoder possessed a golden bracelet, which he had taken from the giant Harim Thirsi. The thickness of this bracelet increased every night. It is the moon on the wax or increase. The moon was never known to leave the sun until she had recovered her ring. Always seen in the west, just after she has escaped the tangle of the sun's rays with the new moon ring upon her finger, and her ship steaming on after the sun under a cloud of smoke. The sun dare not refuse the gift for the moon was the great timekeeper of the sky, and time would unravel and run backward. And again, she is the fountain where the sun watered his horse at the water trough of the moon. King Solomon had a signet ring with the hidden name of God engraved upon it. This gave him authority over the genie and evil spirits. But an evil spirit obtained this, and assuming Solomon's shape, altered the laws for forty days. They were the forty days of temptation in spring. This evil spirit is the winter brother of King Solomon. They both look alike in appearance, but the winter moon has the evil eye. He is the destroyer and turns to stone. But the spring moon is life-giving. The Sun King takes the light off the moon, takes the old ring off and puts a new ring on her finger or sends it back to the moon. Sometimes they exchange rings as pledges. The Sun takes the last bright ring off the moon's finger and on the third day replaces or puts his own in its place. The ring will fit anywhere and always contracts or expands to accommodate itself to the size of the moon just like the ship Skidbaldner. King Arthur had on his finger a ring, the gift of the fairy Vivian Le Fay, or Lady of the Lake, by which she held him prisoner in the forest of enchantment. This ring caused him to lose reason and memory, and the enchantment could only be broken by the removal of the ring. It is the winter ring of the moon, cold and insensible. It will hold its captive bound until removed by the life-giving warmth of spring. The ancients used to represent Prometheus with a ring of iron, which means the ring of winter, like the iron mask of the prisoner in the castle. In the 17th century, a Jewish bridegroom sent to his bride the day before the wedding, a girdle with a golden buckle. And she sent one in exchange with a silver buckle. The sun is golden and the moon is silver. Then the bridegroom walked three times around the bride and took her by the right hand. In the way the sun walks three times around the moon, on the three dark nights of the moon before he gives her his hand, which is the wedding band. This ring was given to ambassadors, generals, and state messengers. It was the passport to foreign kings by which they might be recognized at a foreign court. In the same way as it was carried by the moon Mercury as messenger and ambassador of the gods, that he might be identified at foreign courts when challenged, at the gate on entering every constellation in the circuit of the zodiac. Pharaoh took off his ring and put it on the hand of Joseph. 
By this, he delegated his authority. And when a pope dies, his ring is broken. Thank you for joining me.